What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example on the exponential functions unit test for grade 11 functions. As usual, what I recommend, pause the video, try this question yourself, see if you're getting the same answers that I am. Try to mimic a test environment as much as you can. And so once you get to the actual test, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable. And so what I would recommend doing, because we have a bunch here, maybe just try part A first, then see if you got that right, watch the solution for just part A, then try part B, watch the solution, et cetera, et cetera. So any mistakes you're making, they're not carrying over. So maybe just do one by one. And uh, starting off with this first one, we got seven to the negative four times seven to the power of two. So notice we're multiplying two exponential expressions with the same base, meaning that we can add those exponents and write it as one exponential expression. So the uh, rule that we're using here is if we have like a to the x, a to the y, we are just basically adding those exponents. And maybe when you're studying for this test, on the side you could have a sheet with all these different rules. And so you know how to apply them when the questions come up. And then you could always refer back to them if you forget the rule. And the more you refer back to the sheet that you would make, you'll remember it more during the uh, test. So uh, here, what would happen? Negative four plus two, that gives us negative two. And then we have to rewrite this in terms of positive exponents, and then we have to evaluate. So now we have a negative exponent. So what would we do here? Well, if you remember, if you ever have a to the negative x, you rewrite that by bringing that uh, a to the negative x down to the denominator, and then it becomes positive x, and then you're left with a one at the top, right? So applying that here, you'd end up with one over seven to the power two. And now we change this to a single expression with a positive exponent, and then to evaluate it, seven to the power two is 49. So answer would be one over 49, like that. All right, so that's the answer for part A. Now in part B here, you got six to the negative two to the power of three. Now, whenever there's exponents right beside each other like this, what do you do? You multiply them, right? You don't add them, you multiply them. Notice the difference between this and this, right? There's no like six to the power of three. If it was like that, then you'd be adding those exponents. But because there's no other base here and the exponents are right beside each other, you multiply them. The rule that you're basically using is if you got like a to the x to the power of y, you are basically just multiplying the exponents. And then again, we got six to the negative six, got to change that to have a positive exponent. So it would be one over six to the power of positive six. So that would be with a positive exponent. And then to evaluate it, six to the power of six, that would give us 46,656, like that. So that would be the final answer for part B. Then moving on to part C, we got three to the negative five times three to the power of positive five. So here again, two exponential expressions multiplying with the same base, meaning we could add the exponent. Notice what are we gonna be left with? Three to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is just one, right? No matter if that's like a negative number, no matter if that's like a fraction, right? Anything to the power of zero is always gonna equal one. So that's gonna be the answer for part C. Yo, yo, what's up? Quick little intermission here. I wanted to mention a few things and we'll get right back into the video. Number one, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there's a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. And there you can find all of the videos organized by chapter, by section, and there's also tests that you could try at the end of each unit that have video solutions. Number two, if you feel like you need tutoring at any point, hit me up. I'm tutoring students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. My contact details are on the website. You could text me and we can book a session. And finally, if you feel like you're getting any value from this video, if you could please like the video and subscribe to the channel, hit me up on all my socials. It does help me out a lot. If you feel like any of your friends can benefit, feel free to forward the website to them as well. And back to the video, we go. Now here, notice that we are dividing two exponential expressions with the same base. And whenever you're dividing exponential expressions with the same base, what do you do with the exponents? 
you subtract them. Okay, another way this could have been written is as a fraction. So 4 to the power of 4 divided by 4 to the negative 2, right? This and this, they both mean the same thing. The fraction is just a division. So we would have 4 to the power of what? 4 minus negative 2, like that. And so this would end up being 4 to the power of positive 6. And then 4 to the power of 6, that would give us 4,096. So that ends up being the answer for part D. And then finally, part E, we got negative 2 to the power of 3 all over negative 2 to the power of 2 times negative 2 to the power of 5. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to work with the denominator. So notice again, two expressions multiplying with the same base. So we could add the exponent, that would be 2 plus 5. So that would be uh, negative 2 to the power of 3 over negative 2 to the power of 7. Now, what's going to happen here is we're dividing two exponential expressions with the same base. So we could rewrite this as, let's actually just write it over here. So we got negative 2 to the power of 3 minus 7, which would basically end up being uh, negative 2 to the power of negative 4. And then this is a negative exponent. Let's bring that down to the denominator and make it a positive. This negative does not change. The base does not change when you bring it down, right? So notice it's stayed a negative, only the exponent changes to a positive. Another way to look at it, another way I like to look at it is if we have this expression here, you could picture this as like three negative twos at the top and then seven negative twos at the bottom, like that, right? And so notice, cancel, 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 cancel. We got a one at the top. How many negative twos are left in the bottom? There's four of them left. So that's another way to visualize um, exponential expressions with the same base within fractions. Right, you got three at the top, you got seven at the bottom. And that's why whenever I'm dealing with fractions, I always like to make sure that the exponents are positive. So if this was like a negative seven, I would bring that up. If this was a negative three, I would bring that down. And you've seen me do this in the lecture videos in more complex uh, exponential expressions that we had to simplify. But this is kind of a nice visual way to, uh, to think about this right here, right? So we got four negative twos left, or negative two to the power of four, which that is just positive 16, right? So one over 16 ends up being the final answer for part E. And that is the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna find more videos like this, you can go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all my courses are organized for both high school and university. All the videos are organized by chapter. Also, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. My contact details are also on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.